You're watching News 3, the Southern Illinois News Leader, live from WSIL-TV in high definition. News 3 starts right now. Yeah, these trips, they'll say it, if you ain't got nobody, no volunteers, they're not going anywhere. A growing problem for local fire departments, not enough volunteers to handle the calls. Good evening, many fire departments across our region depend on volunteers, but the ranks are thinning and some stations are down to just a half a dozen firefighters. That forces them to rely on other departments and it slows response time. News 3's Amy Fox is live at the Carbondale Township Fire Department with the story for us. Amy. Eden, the Carbondale Township Fire Department is just one of many fire departments dealing with a shrinking list of volunteers. Right now they have just eight, which is about half of what they need. It doesn't matter where they are or what they're doing. Volunteer firefighters are on call 24-7. Get a pager. Uh, we carry the pager around with you all the time. And there's not like certain nights where you have to show up or certain days you just show up. The Carbondale Township Fire Department has four full-time employees and eight volunteers. With such a small staff, the department is often forced to call for mutual aid, which can take up more time. At a f actual structure fire, there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time and you need the manpower to get it all done. A lot of the areas that you know, can't afford to have a full-time fire department, you know, rely on, you know, just normal citizens in the area, you know, step up, you know, dedicate their spare time to help protect the area. In Elkville, the fire department knows all too well how hard it can be to find help. Their entire force is made up of volunteers. Yeah, these trucks, they'll say it if you ain't got nobody, no volunteers, they're not going anywhere. When fire departments recruit new volunteers, they sometimes only last a few months. Sometimes it's not just for everybody. You know, it, you know, it is it's physically straining. You know, sometimes it can be mentally tough and you know, it takes a certain type of person. And once they find out how detailed oriented the training is and how much dedication and how much time you have to put into this job, they kind of fall, fall away. At the end of the day, it's not about how many hours they spent without pay. It's all about the people. You got people out there depending on it. So you got to be there if something happens. Now, volunteers are given uniforms like the one I'm wearing, but when they quit, they have to reuse and recycle them as much as possible. But sometimes they are forced to buy new ones. Live in Jackson County, Amy Fox News 3. So what does it take to be a volunteer firefighter in Illinois? Volunteers have to be at least 18 years old and have a valid driver's license. You have to be in good physical condition as well with a clean criminal record and a four month training course is required. If you'd like to volunteer, you're asked to just visit your local fire station. Carterville is making plans to replace a bus garage destroyed by fire. Flames broke out in the building near Tri-C Elementary School the morning of May 19th. Now the district is discussing what to do at that site. School officials will explore their options in the next few weeks and hope to have a decision by the end of September. In the meantime, the transportation office in Carterville is working out of a temporary building. Let's get a first check on your weather on this Thursday. Here's Nick. Most of us in southern Illinois have stayed rain free today, but over the last hour or so, we've seen a few showers start to pop up. These have stayed pretty close to Route 13, though now the heaviest activity starting to show up in southern Saline County, even northern Pope County, starting to drift to the east into Hardin County, close to the uh, Carver's Ridge area. Most of this activity has stayed uh, south of the Harrisburg area. Now, outside of the rain, temperatures today have once again been well below normal. Most of us today saw high temperatures only in the low to mid 80s, currently 79 degrees in Vienna, 82 degrees though in Harrisburg at the middle school, 78 in Heron, and currently 83 at Summersville Grade School in Mount Vernon. Overnight, a lot of clouds cover around will keep temperatures somewhat more mild than what we've seen the last couple of mornings expecting low 60s. A lot of cloud cover right now across southeast Missouri, so their temperatures will even be uh, more mild than what we expect here in southern Illinois. Tomorrow, a lot of clouds around. Another chance for an isolated shower or two expecting high temperatures low to mid 80s across southern Illinois. The cool air sticks around throughout the weekend. We'll talk more on the details coming up in just a little bit. Nick, thanks. A Carbondale man is going to prison for robbing a credit union. David White has been sentenced to 12 years behind bars. He pleaded guilty to the February robbery of the SIU Credit Union on West Main in Carbondale. 
White will get credit for time served. With good behavior, he could be out of prison in less than six years. His accomplice, Jonathan Whitehead, pleaded guilty in the case back in April. He was sentenced to six and a half years in prison. A man's under arrest for a shooting earlier this month in Massac County. 21-year-old O'Shea Everett was taken into custody yesterday in Lono, Kentucky. He's accused of shooting a man July 11th during an argument on Vienna Street in Metropolis. A 26-year-old suffered non-life-threatening injuries in that shooting. Everett's being held in McCracken County now. His extradition to Massac County is pending. This Murfreesboro man faces child pornography charges. Richard Taylor was arrested yesterday after an investigation headed by the Attorney General's office. Officers say a search of Taylor's home in the 1500 block of Oak Street uncovered child pornography. He's charged with possessing and distributing child porn. Taylor remains in the Jackson County Jail. The Sheriff's Department is raising alarms about the growing number of missing hikers in Pope County. Sheriff Jerry Suits says his department has seen nearly a dozen reports of lost hikers this summer. Many cases come from the Bell Smith Springs and Burden Falls area of the Shawnee. The latest happened just last night. Eight hikers were lost for nearly three hours before search crews found them. Hikers say the trails are not well marked. The hikers are telling us that they're not seeing no signs. That's what they told me last night in, uh, in an ambulance when I went and talked to those ladies. A spokesperson says the Shawnee National Forest is aware of the issue and is looking into what can be done about improving those trails. In our watchdog report tonight, a new study raises serious questions about the security of chemical facilities across the country. The federal government launched a program to secure chemical plants and storage tanks back in 2006. Nearly $600 million later, only a small percentage of inspections have been completed. More than 4,000 facilities in the U.S. are labeled high risk, and most are found in 10 states. That includes Illinois. Local emergency managers say a lot of dangerous materials are stored in and moved through this region. We also have several facilities throughout the region that have anything from anhydrous ammonia, which is you know, used for farming and agriculture purposes, all the way to other more um, larger facilities like Honeywell down in Massac County. Perry County Emergency Management Coordinator David Searby worries that facilities may be shifting more chemicals to trains or trucks to get out of the high-risk category. In 2003, a train carrying dangerous chemicals derailed in Tamaroa in Perry County, causing a major evacuation. The U.S. House will adjourn tomorrow for its August recess, but not before a vote to sue President Obama. The nays are 201. The resolution is adopted. Republicans voted last night to file a lawsuit against the president for making changes to his signature legislation, the Affordable Care Act. Lawmakers say the president overstepped his authority by delaying or waiving some parts of that law. Are you willing to let anyone tear apart what our founders have built? Republicans do not have time to raise the minimum wage, but they have time to sue the president of the United States. No Democrats voted for that plan to sue the president. A federal judge will now decide if the House actually has standing to file that lawsuit. Meanwhile, two federal court decisions are causing confusion about the future of Obamacare. There's a split over whether people who signed up through the federal marketplace can get help paying for their health care. News 3's Michelle Medeiros is here with a look at what this all means, Michelle. Many people who are insured under the Affordable Care Act receive a tax subsidy to help them pay for it. Now the courts are questioning where those subsidies are coming from. Two federal appeals courts are at odds, and their decision could make insurance under the Affordable Care Act much less affordable. The issue has to do with the language in the statute. Exchange established by the state. What does that mean? That's what the courts are trying to decide. A Washington, D.C. appeals court ruled it illegal for subsidies to come from the federal exchange. Meanwhile, another federal court said subsidies from the federal exchange are legal. Healthcare professor Gene Basanta says this could put some states, like Illinois, in trouble. Illinois has a federal state partnership exchange, okay? So it's not clear whether exactly where it would fall. Jennifer Nance from Jackson County Family Services says 
Losing the subsidies would force many people to drop their new insurance. Over the past year that we've been doing these enrollments is that the majority of the people in our area, they are lower income and they do qualify for these subsidies. For a family of four, that would be anyone making an income less than, I think it's about $94,000. Despite the commotion in the courts, Nance says the Illinois marketplace is telling their insured to proceed with business as usual for the time being. We just don't want them to be worried or thinking that this is going to impact them tomorrow because it's not. It, it may be further down the line should any change be made. How far that is, no one's sure. But as for now, the marketplace is set to host another open enrollment period starting November 15th. We're in the first or second chapter of a fairly long book here, um, and any number of things can happen. So we have to wait and see how this plays out in the courts, but what could it mean for the states here in our region? Well, that all depends on how the courts continue to interpret that statute. Now, Kentucky has a state exchange, so they're in the clear. Now, Missouri, on the other hand, they use the federal exchange, so if the D.C.'s court decision is upheld, that means they could lose their subsidies. But as for us here in Illinois, it's sort of a gray area because we share a state and federal partnership in our marketplace. So for now, it's kind of just a waiting game to see how the courts will decide for the future of Obamacare. Okay, Michelle, thank you. A thousand undocumented immigrant children could soon be heading here to Illinois. The mayor of Chicago says bringing those children to his city is simply the right thing to do. They're among tens of thousands who have crossed the Mexican border in recent months, mostly coming from Central America. The president recently approached the mayor of Chicago about housing the children there in sites backed by the federal government. There's no word when the kids could arrive in Chicago. Still ahead here at six, it's a delicious summer tradition in Union County. We go behind the scenes prepping for the Cobden Peach Festival. And later, our Golf Ticks Tips segment takes a swing at specialty shots. You're watching News 3. You're watching News 3 at 6 o'clock with Eden Schultz, Emily Finnegan, Chief Meteorologist Jim Razor, and Darren Kennard with Sports. It is all about peaches this weekend in Union County. The village of Cobden will be celebrating the 77th annual Peach Festival. News 3's Evie Allen is here with a closer look at the big preparations. Evie. Eden, every year the ladies of the community put on their aprons to bake a huge patch of peach cobbler. And this year is no different. Flam Orchards is also getting ready for the weekend. The sign is up and the rides are ready as Cobden welcomes its annual peach festival. It's just something that you do when you live in Cobden. That's most people, that's what you do. You come to the peach festival. For eight decades, the event has been a source of pride for natives like Sue Brumlevy. She's been overseeing the popular peaches and cream stand for more than 20 years. We pretty well sell out every year, so I, that's all we can, you know, hope to do is to, is to sell out and, and hope that everyone enjoys the cobbler. The women of the community will be baking nearly 90 cobblers to sell at the stand. And if you want to take home fresh peaches, you'll have to spin for them, all to celebrate the homegrown juicy fruit. People will drive a long ways to get peaches from Southern Illinois. The peaches come from Flam Orchards. Co-owner Mike Flam says this is their busiest time of year. They've already peeled the peaches and prepared pie crust for 300 to 400 pans of cobbler. 50 will be donated to the Cobden Women's Club to sell at the stand. Well, we can bake somewhere around 20 cobblers an hour. So we'll probably be baking most of the day tomorrow and Saturday. The orchard will see quite a few people rolling in starting tomorrow. Both Flam and Brumlevy agree the celebration has always been like a homecoming. Well, there's a lot of local people and a lot of people that live out of the area and uh, they'll come back if, if they're from Cobden. The excitement of the Peach Festival begins tomorrow evening and you will end Saturday at the park in Cobden. Live in the studio, Evie Allen, News 3. Evie, thanks. Another popular event coming up soon, the Williamson County Fair. It's the longest running county fair in the state, dating all the way back to 1856. The carnival is set to open next Tuesday, August 5th, and the fair runs through Saturday the 9th. 
A couple, of, a couple of preview events are already happening. There's a 5K run at the fairgrounds on Saturday. Visit the Williamson County Fair website for a full list of those events. Turning back to our weather, another day of below average temperatures to wrap up July as we check out the skate park in Carterville. There may be a few showers headed our way for the first few days of August. Your forecast coming up. Putting accuracy first, this is News 3 weather. A lot of clouds today across southern Illinois. Most of us stay dry. We have seen a few isolated showers pop up here over the last hour. Live look right now in Marion. Looking to the southeast, you can see some of those dark skies out there. Really, most of the shower activity has remained pretty close to Route 13, though most of, as I mentioned, have stayed dry. The heaviest activity continues across parts of southern Saline County and the northern Pope County. A little bit of heavy rainfall in far southeastern Saline County, far northeastern parts of Pope County, and really starting to drift a little bit to the east towards Hardin County. Over the next hour or so, these will continue to fizzle away as the sun starts to go down. We'll start to lose whatever energy we had throughout the day today. The jet stream hasn't moved very much today. It has started a weekend, and that means it's going to start to push back north as we move throughout the weekend. Right now, though, we're still watching a storm system really showing across the southern plains. going to slide to the east move into the deep south and for us that just means a lot of cloud cover around that's what we saw today a few of those isolated showers across southern illinois but really the heaviest rain has stayed well off to our south across parts of southern arkansas all the way down into louisiana and even into eastern texas we've just seen a lot of the cloud cover pushing in and you can see almost the jet stream carved out as troughs across parts of the plains, goes down and dips into the deep south, and then arches up into the northeast. We continue to see those clouds. Those clouds are going to stick around for a good part of the overnight hours. Areas that have seen clouds and really the rain throughout the day have been much cooler than normal. Currently 76 in Tulsa, 73 in Little Rock. Even parts of southeast Missouri today have remained well below normal. Even compared to us here in southern Illinois, most areas in southeast Missouri only saw high temperatures today in the 70s. Currently 84 degrees in Mount Vernon, 81 in Marion and Paducah, but I talk about those 70s across southeast Missouri, currently 77 in Cape Girardeau and 75 degrees at this hour in Poplar Bluff. Our temperature spread for the day from 58 degrees to 83 degrees, so our low temperature this morning about 10 degrees cooler than normal, and our high temperature today just more than 5 degrees cooler than normal. Normals run from 68 to 90, and we're about a, almost a quarter of an inch dry so far for the year. So running through Skycast, you see all those clouds across southeast Missouri. That's actually going to keep their temperatures overnight, likely in the mid 60s. We'll have a few breaks here as we move throughout the overnight hours across southern Illinois. That means most of us will drop back into the low 60s. Tomorrow, much like today, we could see an isolated shower or even isolated storm pop up during the afternoon, though most of us are going to stay dry. As we move towards the evening hours, we lose that heating of the day. Anything that pops up will quickly fizzle away. So temperatures starting off Friday morning, most of us in the low to mid 60s here in southern Illinois, a little bit warmer across southeast Missouri and western Kentucky, warming up in the afternoon, much like today. A lot of cloud cover throughout the afternoon hours, high temperatures expected in the low 80s. So a lot of cloud cover throughout the overnight hours. Possible we see a little bit of fog, especially if the clouds break up throughout the overnight hours over southern Illinois. Isolated showers possible in the afternoon. Really the same thing in here for Friday and Saturday both. And then as we move towards the later part of the weekend, we slowly start to warm back up. Mid 80s expected Sunday into Monday. And by Tuesday, we're actually much closer to normal, expecting uh, upper 80s. It's going to be a little bit of a heat wave. We'll call it that and temperatures still only running close to normal. Not so bad. All right. Thank you, Nick. Two new reports of West Nile virus out of Franklin County. Mosquitoes in West Frankfurt and Ziegler have tested positive for the disease. Franklin County becomes the sixth Southern Illinois County to detect West Nile this season. The best way to prevent getting the disease is to reduce the number of mosquitoes around your home and avoid bites. Don't go outside around dusk and dawn. Wear protective clothing and use mosquito repellent when you do go outside. Now we turn to Ashley Smith for a look at what's coming up tomorrow on News 3 This Morning. A Murfreesboro woman is spending her retirement volunteering 50 to 60 hours a week at a food pantry. We'll hear from her in this week's Unsung Hero. We'll also preview one of the longest running fairs in southern Illinois. We'll see you right here at 5 a.m. And we'll take a break. Sports is next. This is News 3 Sports in HD. You don't have to be a scratch golfer to know how to play specialty shots. In this week's From T to Green segment, Diane Doherty teaches me the art of drawing and fading. 
Welcome to another edition of From Tea to Green. Down the hill from my <laughs> golf guru, Diane Doherty. She wanted to be as tall as me, so I figured I would oblige from the beginning of this segment. <laughs> I digress. We're really talking about drawing and fading today. I liked looking eye to eye with you, even though you were 12 feet down. Okay, we're going to learn how to purposefully draw it and purposefully fade it. Okay. All right, a slice is something we don't want that goes way right, and a hook is something we don't want that goes way left. Okay, okay we have our railroad tracks down, and what we want is we want to set up where we want the ball to start. Okay. So we're on number 10 here and we obviously have trees to the left and the hole is a dog leg left. So preferably we would like to have it go off straight and then kind of curve around the trees. Okay. So we want to start our railroad tracks and your alignment okay. down to the right. Now the key to making it hook or draw is that we are going to put the club face pointed where we want the ball to end. Okay. And we're going to move it back in our stance just a little bit. So you're aligned down your railroad tracks and your club, look where your club is pointed, which is good because that's where you want the ball to end. Okay. All right. Swinging back this way. Exactly. You're swinging down your railroad tracks. Yes, Kelly! I'll take it. Look at that draw. So we just got done learning to hit a draw. Now we are going to set up to another weird looking shot the fade. Now, all these setups can be used, you know, no any matter. club. Yeah. Any club. If you want to fade it, you set up like this. So we're going to line up to the left okay. and our club's going to be pointed to the green, which is on the right. So your feet are parallel to the railroad tracks and your club is going to just point to the green. All right. Now just swing down your railroad tracks, Cal. Awesome. Nice fade. Thank you, and I even got it around the tree. Yes, you did. And don't forget to write into us and let us know what you want to see on upcoming segments. I hope you were taking notes. You always make it look so easy as <laughs> the not. thing. I if mean, I we, were out there, I'd just be hacking away. We have a great time shooting the segments. We get off task a little <laughs> bit sometimes. I do hit bad shots. I will mention that at, in a couple of weeks here, we're going to have a bloopers edition of okay. from Tita Green, so we you can see all the bad shots all I right. do hit occasionally. Thank you, Kelly, and we're back after this watching a little bit of activity on radar right There's now. There's still a few showers out there here over the next hour. Those will completely fizzle away as the sun starts to go down. But we are still watching these mainly now in northern Pope County, far southern Saline County and far eastern parts of Williamson County. As I mentioned, these will start to go away here very quickly. Really, we're going to do it all over again tomorrow. Temperatures starting off low 60s, a lot of clouds around. Chances for an isolated shower, even a pop up thunderstorm possible later in the day. High temperatures only in the low 80s. This time of year, we average a high right around 90. So just another day in the books this month and even into early August with temperatures well below normal. Okay, Nick, thanks. And thank you for joining us. Entertainment Tonight is on the way next. Have a good evening, and we'll see you right back here at 10.